day. Weather's fine, but then white line sky is cloudy. Looks like rain, but nothing ever falls on California's plains. Skies look gummy, look crummy, look fake. I can't escape the dull heartache, knowing that my weather's been taken from me. Asking myself, how can it be? Everyone, this is Kate Willens broadcasting on American Freedom Radio, the Blue Sky Report, and this is January 21st, 2016. And we're here today with two activists from the UK. We're delighted to have Terry Lawton from Ireland and Harry Rhodes from England. And they've both done beautiful, encouraging, and amazing work over there in the UK across the pond. And we're just delighted to have you both. I'd like to begin the show today with a poem because it's a poem that's been ringing in my head all morning. And sometimes I don't really know why these things come, but I'm going to respect it because I think it may have bearing on what we're going to speak about this morning. So this is a poem by Rainer Maria Rilke, the German poet, from Sonnets to Orpheus, a collection of sonnets that he wrote back in the 40s or the 30s. And it goes like this. Silent friend of many distances, feel how your breath enlarges all of space. Let your presence ring out like a bell into the night. Move through transformation out and in. What is the deepest loss that you have suffered? If drinking is bitter, change yourself to wine. In this immeasurable darkness, be the power that rounds your senses in their magic ring, the sense of their mysterious encounter. And if the earthly no longer knows your name, whisper to the silent earth, I'm flowing, and to the flashing water say, I am. And so we bring our our presences to this movement to face a, a very dark time, and a movement that's global in nature, as Terry and as Harry have have shown over and over. So Harry Rhodes and Terry Lawton, welcome to the show. Good evening. Uh, Great great to have you both here. And um, I'd like to introduce you both with a bio uh, that that you provided me. And so I'll, I'll start with Harry. Harry is an inventor and a writer of patents. He's a scientific dude. He didn't say that, but I did. Um, he attended protests at 10 Downing Street in London and many other protests, I'm sure. And he challenged David Keith on, I'm going to say this in the English way and tell me if it's okay, aluminum, or we say here aluminum, additives in front of top scientists at Cambridge and actually drove David Keith off stage, as I, as I have been told. Um, he was, however, in a very serious car crash after being interviewed by police in Wales at a harp station. And the evidence for his crash was entirely missing, which is very, very odd. He's attended geoengineering conferences, and he can tell us a lot today about Oregon, and we're going to talk to him about that because he's created some amazing Oregon generators, cloud busters, uh, based on the work of William Reich or Wilhelm Reich. Um, he's a multi-patent holder, an engineer, an innovator, and a visionary. And he has a website called Lex Energy Solutions, which will give you that website during the show. And now I'm going to tell you about uh, Terry. Okay. So Terry Lawton is an activist in County Wexford, Ireland, who has been bringing awareness to global climate engineering operations for over five years. He and his street activism team, Wexford Skywatch, hold information days throughout the southeast of Ireland, in their ongoing attempts to awaken the masses to these crimes against life on Earth. Terry has attended two climate engineering conferences, 
where top climate engineering proponents laid out their plans to take control of the Earth's climate as a response to global warming. He and other activists were successful in shining the light of truth on these conferences and imparted pertinent information which proved that their supposed plans to engineer the climate are already a nefarious reality. And Terry, I might add, they've been a nefarious reality for for about 60 years. And I think that um, Harry is going to tell us about that. So let's start with that, Harry. Um, I watched your video this morning that you put out end of December talking about the weather modification that's been going on. And they know about it since the 40s. Will you please begin there and tell us what you know, a little bit about what you know there? Yes, um, books are a great thing because uh, unlike the Internet, they can't digitally remove the old books. And I know Max Bliss is into this. Um, and I've got books here that talk about weather modification in the 1940s. But these are the actual scientists that did the experiments, recorded them. Um, they've they've got photographs, so they've manipulated 12 cubic miles of a cloud with half a gram of silver iodide so little did they realize that when you come 50 60 70 years later Mm -hmm. that they will be accused of actually deploying this and i mean i often wonder whether they regret making these books public (laughs) but hey we've got them (laughs) so yeah it's real and if anybody listening now thinks it's just a conspiracy theory after looking at this for many, many years, we can assure you it definitely is not. And just to touch on a couple of things in the UK, we've had massive record breaking floods. And all of these were predicted when you could look on the satellites and see exactly how it was done using the electromagnetic equipment. Um, all about ionization, whether naturally is caused by the ionization of the atmosphere. Um, we've all gone on the beach or stood there and outside before a storm came and your hair stands on end. And that's the negative ions coming from the planet trying to react with the positive ions in the atmosphere. But when these are seriously upset, um, that's what causes things like precipitation, uh, lightning, that sort of thing. But what they've done, they've hijacked what we could call uh, what would be a natural process but it's been hijacked. Now, you mentioned the ionization of the atmosphere. I heard Sophia Smallstorm in a marvelous video called From Chemtrails to Pseudo Life. And this was the video that really educated me more than anything else. And she talks about all the weather here. She said that the charge of the atmosphere, the atmosphere should not have a charge, but they created charged particles in the ionosphere. I guess it's the troposphere. I'm not exactly sure. And I always assumed it was for the purpose of carrying out various waves, such as waves coming from harp. Have I got that wrong, Harry or Terry? I mean, can you talk a little bit more about this ionization process that they're doing? Um, Well, the the sun actually puts positively charged ions into our atmosphere naturally. Um, Solar Mm -hmm. flares, they increase um, tremendously during solar flares. But it, it shouldn't really have the effect on the weather um that we see today um it was amazing how they counted down 500 days to climate chaos how did they know 500 days prior before having for example the world's largest hurricane on record approaching the asian coast and hitting china um i would love to know how they arrived at that conclusion that would be very interesting well based on what but that was deliberately manipulated. You could see the effects in the cloud formations prior to that hurricane uh, taking place. And it, it, they've not been able to um, do away with the fingerprint that's left by equipment like HARP. And of course, they now have satellites, many, many satellites, un- uh, controlled by the military, by the way, um, under their weather umbrella. So, you know, you think about these books that you encountered in, you know, books from the 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s, and you can only imagine how fine tuned their manipulation must be at this point. I'd like to just begin by asking you guys both, 
Um, and why don't you go first, Harry, and then Terry, let's bring you in about how I know it's a basic question, but it is interesting to find out how you came into this movement, how you woke up to the realities, the very, very grave criminal realities of this of this program above our heads. So, Harry, tell us. Um, three and a half years ago, I had a four kilowatt um, solar UV generator system and panels on my roof. And in the summer, it was great. I was actually hitting four kilowatts. And then some days, um, beautiful blue sky. And I noticed that the kilowatt generation was dropping. Sometimes it would half when we actually had a blue sky predicted because it was all novel to me at the time. You can't, you can't keep your eyes off the screen. You keep going back to it. Um, and then I noticed it coincided with white lines in the sky. And these lines expanded and expanded until the sun became a haze. And it was only through conversation. This went on for a couple of months. And then I, when I looked on the Internet, I came across the word, the word chemtrail. And I thought, what the heck's that, a chemtrail? And, of course, once, once the bull starts rolling, and I'm fairly technically minded to work out that possibly this is true. And, of course, a few weeks down the line after research and research, it hits you like a brick. And then you realize that possibly most of the weather on the planet is manipulated and controlled by, uh, by certain people which we can go into <laughs> a bit later on. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Terry, what about you? Well, my moment of awakening uh, started back in October of 2009. Uh, the trigger issue for me initially was 9-11. Uh, um, I started finding out lots of information about, you know, about Building 7, which wasn't mentioned in the mainstream media. Um, Started finding out about, you know, two towers fell that day due to fire and never ever in the history of our, of our, of, our, of, um, of, uh, in building, uh, um, infrastructure history have, have buildings ever fallen due to fire. So, um, I started waking up to 9-11. That was the first issue. And then I started finding out lots of other different coming across things like we're being poisoned by the government with fluoride in our water and then started finding out about vaccines and, um, how mercury is put into them and all sorts of deadly additives and which cause all sorts of neurological disorders. And, um, yeah, it was just one issue after another. I started raising awareness to fluoride first. Um, I started doing information days in Ireland here um, about, six, about five years ago. And it was through this time I started to find out about um, about geoengineering and chemtrailing. Um, this, this, this was bigger than anything that I had heard of before. It was bigger than all of the other assaults that humanity and life on earth is under. And I thought this is the, this is the, mm -hmm. the issue that I need to tackle first and foremost. And after geoengineering, nothing else matters. So I've, 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 um, dedicated all of my time and effort into this, this issue. And, um, that's what I've been doing since. Um, I just, I go out in the streets. So I've got a street team of activists. We go out in the streets of the southeast of Ireland. Um, we just bring information to uh, the people um, about weather modification, about about the history of um, of, of weather control, and about you know um, patents. We we have we have a, a book of patents going back as far as 1905. Patents on how to electrically charge the atmosphere to cause fog. Um, um, electronic rainmaking patents going back to the 1930s, uh, artificial cloud creation, 1940s, and you know we just got a list of patents. So we just show people the facts. We introduce them to the history, and um, we also have uh, some nice colourful banners which we take out in the streets. Banners of um, the spray nozzles which are retrofitted on all commercial airliners. Um, we have um, banners of the new NASA cloud chart which has 36 cloud types. Um, mm. There was only nine cloud types when I went to school. So we just bring pertinent information, you know, uh, out into the streets, information that, you know, people can ignore at their own risk. But, you know, we can we can ignore reality, but we can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. You know, we're being we're all being sprayed. Um, if you breed, these these programs affect you. And um, yeah, so I think it's 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 my duty to do what I'm doing. And. I will never give up as long as I've got as long as I've got a heartbeat. I'm I'm not giving up this fight. 
<laughs> it's so great, Terry. Um, I feel the same way. And I, it's really interesting how, you know, the people that are on board with, with really, uh, moving forward to, to change what's happening and to bring this to the light of day, it's as if a fire is under them and they just, they can't stop because for some reason, you know, we realize that the air we breathe is, is of course the most important thing and that that this is the, I mean, Clifford Carnicom has called this the, the greatest crime in the history of the world. And it, I, I would agree. Um, I do want to ask you, Terry, about the activism that you're doing. And by the way, thank you so much for what you're doing. Are there, how do you think it's being received by the people that you're encountering? And are there other groups, let's say in the west of Ireland or in the north of Ireland that you're collaborating with? Or is this the only anti-geoengineering work that's being done in Ireland right now? Well, um, I've been I've been trying to um, set up street teams all around the country. My dream is to have a street team in every town, village, and city every weekend, just raising the alarm. Every you know, teams out, visible with good information, and just getting the word out. This is my dream. Um, so mm-hmm. last summer, I sent out about 150, possibly 200 um, canvas, um, sorry, PVC colorful banners. I sent these banners out to activists all over the UK and Ireland and. Um, yeah, there's there's about three or four um, teams around the UK and Ireland that get out there, but um, kind of there's there's one one team in Dublin they get out once a month. There's another couple of guys up in Scotland they get out probably of every few months. But you know, I think people just need to get more serious about this and you know get more active and you know. But uh, I'd say yeah, there's probably only two or two street teams altogether in Ireland. There's my team down here in Wexford and. The guys in Dublin, but apart from that, that's that's all really in Ireland. Um, yeah, so as I said, you know, you know I was in Ireland. My, sorry. As as um, I said, it's 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 just this is this is what I I want is to get a street team in every town, and until this yes. is happening, I'm not I'm not going to be 100 percent happy. You know. <laughs> yes, I know, and and we want you to be happy, Terry. I, I was in Ireland uh, in 2000, summer of 2010. And I have to say, you know, I've always loved Ireland. It's my favorite. It's just the culture, the music. It's my favorite country. And I remember craning my neck as the plane was taking off to go back home because I wanted to catch the last glimpse that I could of the most beautiful and green and marvelous country that I had ever laid eyes upon. And to think that this travesty is abusing the airspace over Ireland and Scotland and England, it just breaks my heart, you know, because when you see uh, this shit in the sky, it the way that it casts a pallor over the land, you know, how it whitens the sky from being the normal line of colors that you see in a normal color spectrum to just this kind of silvery coloration of light. Um, and then how, how you feel that there's a kind of a plastic, a plasticity to the sky it's just, it's such a, to anyone that loves nature, and for me, you know, when I first discovered it, I was, you know, I heard about them, I saw them, and I'm like, yeah, that's it. And it was, I didn't really need a whole lot of convincing. And then, of course, I did my research. So, uh, Terry, when you talk to people on the street, um, how does it go? What do they say? What's your response? What are you getting back? Well, I'm finding, Kate, you know, um, that, you know, awareness is definitely building. It's becoming more common knowledge. Lots of people I speak to out in the streets know about, you know, Operation Popeye in Vietnam. They know that the Olympics, the weather for the Olympics was engineered in Beijing. You know, um, lots, lots of people have different pieces of information of this whole big jigsaw, you know. Um, but I, very few of them are aware of the, you know, the, the seriousness of this and the, the sinister agenda that's at play here. Um, you know, we, 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 um, lots of us, lots of us know there's weather modification programs, you know, um, companies that, that, um, that make money out of, out of controlling the weather, but, um, and, and lots of people I talk to know about this, you know, but they, they don't realize that they're being sprayed daily themselves and they don't realize that, you know, that our whole climate is just in, 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 um, turmoil because of these programs and, um, I think it's 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 a very hard issue to wake people up to and to, to get them to fully understand the uh, magnitude of what we're dealing with here, um, you know, because this is just an abomination of unfathomable, unspeakable 
proportion and it's yeah it's 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 very hard to get people to to really understand what's going on and to take action to stop it i, I really think but um yeah it's it's, Jerry, it's not do, an are you easy taking job, this Kate. to the government are you taking this have you had any luck with taking it to the government officials and and if so how what is their response yeah i've been stonewalled i've phoned all the agencies i've written to all the agencies the epa the department of environment the department of defense mm-hmm. the military the, the police the Aviation Authority, mm-hmm. I've been in contact with all of these agencies and I've been just told that I'm um, just what I'm seeing is water vapor in the sky and nothing to mm-hmm. worry about. Go back to sleep. So all these agencies, all these operatives working for these agencies have been all scripted with the same prepared answers. So it's 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 very obvious that they have all been, you know, prepared, you know, for for this time of, of awakening. Um, I've, I've, I've contacted all politicians in Ireland. I have sent out a letter out to all politicians wow. and I have got a response from about three or four of, of these politicians. Um, the responses I got back were only, um, um, acknowledging receipt of my letter, but nothing else. So no, none wow. of these politicians, none of these politicians are willing to take this on. None of them are willing to do anything to stop it. Um, it's it's just um you know we're we're not going to get any help from the establishment obviously because the establishment is the problem the establishment is there all the agencies are in place to ensure that this crime can these these horrendous crimes can continue because if the department of environment and if the environmental protection agency were doing their jobs of course these programs could never continue they could never have so started have- in the first place so you know these right. agencies these people in government need to go and there's no point in looking up to these people and expecting them to come up with a solution to stop it because they are the problem so you know it's 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 the people we're we're in this on our own you know and that's why I go out in the streets because I believe that a, a, a critical mass awareness is the only way we're ever going to stop this we got to reach that point where just enough people really understand the magnitude and just get really pissed off and just just stop to stop i don't i don't know what it's going to take whether we're going to have to slip into our i don't know our sovereign or common law jurisdictions you know and just take get away from this whole fictional government crap you know the birth certificate and all this because we're all enslaved by the birth certificate and we're just bloody numbers on a screen and you know so i don't know i don't know if it's going to take common law or magna carta or brehan law i don't know but, you know, if people have answers, I, I want to work with people that, you know, that are willing to, you know, put their skills to use, you know, and um, to hold these criminals accountable. But, you know, I don't know. How, how do you how do you hold those accountable for crimes that they are committing themselves while they're, well, they're supposedly the ones that are there to protect us? You know, it's a tough one. It's a very tough one. And there's there's a kind of duplicity, a double edged sword to this whole movement that you've described very well. And I think you're right that because they're the ones committing the crimes and they're the ones protecting their own asses, that the only way we can do it is to continue and continue to raise awareness so that enough, you know, if, if let's say 55 percent or 60 or 70 percent of the people know about this and know the significance of what it means to their health and to life on this planet, I guess those People in power are going to have to do something. I, I think it, and Harry, um, I want to bring you in too on this. Um, what, uh, when you look at the global nature of this, uh, Harry put together this video that he's showing, and also Patrick Roddy is putting together videos that are showing the, the skies over various regions of the world, everywhere from India to Japan to Saudi Arabia, you know, everybody's doing this. And when the people that don't believe this is happening hear about the program, they say, well, come on, you know, how could it be coordinated all over the world? And why, how come everybody's keeping their their mouths shut about it? And one wonders, you know, how high up really are the people that know? And I wonder sometimes if, if the vast majority of government officials really are clueless and are being told, you know, you're going to hear, you're going to see these white lines, but really it's just water vapor. And that's what you need to tell the people. You know, I'd like to think that there are many more innocent people in government than, than guilty ones. But, but the first question really that I brought up is how is it possible that this thing is coordinated globally? Have you any idea on that, Harry? Um, yeah, yeah, they use very powerful computers for starters. 
And we, Terry and myself, we had a fantastic day at the Met Office in the United Kingdom down Bristol. Uh, they only have an open day about once every two years. So we went down there with Martin Beard, Terry went, I went, and I took my uh, five-year-old son as well. Um, very funny, actually, what happened. I'll explain that in a minute. <laughs> but the Met Office have invested in the last 24 months millions. Wait, of tell us what, wait, 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 what office is this? I didn't quite catch it with your beautiful accent. The Met Office? Yeah, the Meteorological Office in the United Kingdom. Ah, thank uh, you. Okay. A lot of other computers around the world are linked to this. <clears throat> and when Terry and myself were there, there was um, a couple of talks, one by a gentleman called Doug Johnson. Um, I asked the question there, is the Met Office involved in any weather modification or geoengineering and he stood back in his eyes at the ceiling and um, because he wasn't expecting a question like that and this is in front of an audience and he said well no 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 we don't we don't get involved with that and i've since found that um doug johnson was in charge of the aerosol disbursement and he's got it on his cv online <laughs> as a, a, wow. a I think from the met office of the ship tracks mm. that he was involved with for a six week experiment for cloud formations in the Atlantic. And it's all documented. So now the Met Office don't get involved and the people working there don't, obviously. <laughs> but um, when we went there, um, what is unusual, it's only weather we're talking about, but the, the Met Office, um, which is a public body, is subject to the Official Secrecy Act, which is amazing. We're talking the weather. So wow. why would a meteorological office be subject to the Secrecy Act? And mm. I'll tell you why it is, because what's going on in that computer is incriminating. Um, they told us that that computer can monitor through NextRad's satellites and other equipment per cubic quarter of a kilometre of the atmosphere across the UK, for example. So mm. when a chemtrail is laid, that will pick it up very accurately. Now, mm. add on the back of that EMF frequencies and ionizers, which can manipulate the atmosphere, both temperature and wind direction, and you've got a fantastic recipe to control the weather. Um, and it's as simple as that. So, Harry, I just want to tell you, last week I interviewed Scott Stevens, and he told us about how, just what you're saying, that they've got these computers, that the, the chemtrails, you know, show them something about how the atmosphere is being modulated and modified in that particular little area, okay? And that they're, this is how they're able to do it. But what I didn't get a chance to ask him is about the the scalar about when we see all the the ridges forming in the in the clouds you know when we see an obvious wave pattern what is really going on and how do these is it am i using the correct terminology is it scalar or electromagnetic frequencies how are these working yeah, to manipulate our weather please well the lines in the sky i've posted photos on a gentleman um i can't remember his name now but he's looking into dark energy which is real by the way um i'll explain that later but the frequency for example when you look onto the screen when you have frequencies you've got the line going up and down like a wave and they measure the distance between that wave and the depth of it so you can work out your frequency so you can have one going vertical up and down as a wave and attached to that is one moving left and right. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has an effect when the frequency is going up and down, it affects the way the clouds form, for example. And depending where the pitch is on the frequency um, is where the wave forms and where the wave doesn't form. So you get lines and gaps in clouds which takes up the pattern of the frequency which is being transmitted. And if you have two or three being transmitted, you will get a wave with breaks in it and you'll get a second wave in another direction. And that's exactly what we see on satellite pictures. So uh, are the frequencies being generated from some kind of equipment or are these natural frequencies that are being manipulated? 
Well, the Earth, the Earth itself has natural frequencies. I mean, we've got the uh, um, different layers of frequencies. For example, when a solar flare occurs, the frequencies around the Earth increase. The Earth rings like a bell. There's also frequencies going on inside the Earth as well in different layers. The Van Allen belt, for example, is um, an unusual frequency, which, by the way, uh, NASA wants to destroy this year. They've spent hundreds of millions of pounds on equipment, um, some mounted on a ship, um, to actually destroy the Van Allen belt. Um, well, can you tell us what is, the, what is the Van Allen belt and why the heck would they want to be destroying it? Um, the Van Allen belt contains um, tremendous amounts of energy, electromagnetic energy. Um, it's very dangerous for things like satellites and rocket missions because when they pass through it, it can wipe out all the electronics. Um, it's one of the few frequencies and belts around the planet that when a solar flare, and bear in mind when a solar flare kicks in, you've got fantastic electronic energy in the particles, positively charged particles, um, passing the Earth. And the Earth's magnetic field is what protects us, so it pushes it out of the way, some of it's the Earth, but the majority of it passes the Earth. The Van Allen belt, I believe, plays a large part in that. Um, but for some reason, NASA wants to destroy it. And on a video, it's there online. You can look at them talking about it. And someone says, well, what will be the effect of eliminating the Van Allen belt? And one gentleman says, well, we don't really know. But we'll find <laughs> out. We will oh find God. out. Thank you. Oh, my God. You know, it just seems it's to me that... They don't understand. Pardon me, Harry. Go ahead, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll save my point. Go ahead. Um, and Terry knows this. Me and Terry have been discussing this. When they do a transmission of energies, for example, from HARP, as the frequencies go through the atmosphere, so let's say they generate a 1,000 kilowatts, it magnifies that by up to 100 times. So... You end up with 100,000 kilowatts. It's a bit like having a small match and you've got a rag with petrol on it. The, the flame immensely is magnified through the reaction so that when these frequencies come back towards the planet in an arc, um, the energy is incredible. It's, it's so much So what you're saying, okay, so the energies then are being amplified by HARP and other similar equipment, but they're not being generated. The, 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 the energies, the, the frequencies are naturally there, but they're simply being amplified by engineered equipment. Is that what the you're saying? The equipment they have is very powerful, but it's enhanced okay. by the energy that's already in the atmosphere as well. So they're hijacking the energy that's already up there. Yep. Can, can I so, just so add? May I ask you guys? Oh, yeah, Terry, Terry go ahead, please. Um, as Harry was saying, we, we believe that because this, this Met Office supercomputer is the most sophisticated, advanced supercomputer of its type. Actually, Harry said that they've got a second one there now. This is the most sophisticated atmospheric computer on the planet. This thing, as Harry said, knows exactly what's going on in every square inch of the entire Earth's atmosphere. Now, when you've got a computer system that knows what's going on everywhere in the atmosphere, you've got the most powerful capability to control the weather. Now, all of these harp stations, all the next rads, they're all linked up to the supercomputer. It knows exactly what's going on with all of these different facilities. We, um, we believe that the, um, the spray mechanisms retrofitted on the, on the, um, commercial airliners, we believe that they are remote controlled via satellite and coordinated from this central, um, computer system at the Met Office. So let's say if there's a piece of a blank, uh, a, a piece of cloud cover missing, say, in the Irish Sea, um, the supercomputer will see this and it will get a, a, the next plane going over there to deploy a trail of whatever substance into that gap to fill that space. Um, so, mm. Kate, you were asking, you know, how can a, a system, how can a program like this be coordinated, you know, by so many people? You know, you really don't have, need to have a lot of people involved, you know, um, with hands on, um, a, pro, a hands on involvement in this when you've got these kind of technologies, you know, computers and robotics can do so much of this. So, you know, the, 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 I believe that the pilots have no involvement whatsoever in these programs. And, you know, if you think about it, why would you need a, the pilot to have involvement anyhow? It would be just a waste of time. The, the pilot's busy flying the plane. If you've got the technic, technical equipment there, 
to do that without human involvement, you know, that's much better to, to do that because then, you, you know, you don't have fear of pilots speaking out and all this as well. So um, I've spoken to um, one pilot before on the streets of Ca- County, County Carlow here in Ireland. And this guy flew for, he flew, flies for Flyby Air from um, Belfast to Birmingham, five days a week. And he's been a pilot for 10 years. And he guaranteed me 100% that he has no involvement in these programs. But he said he is 100% aware that these programs are taking place and commercial air, airliners are being used to deliver substances into the atmosphere to facilitate weather modification, climate modification programs. But he said he, as I, as, as I said, he said he has no involvement. And I, I was getting this eye contact from this guy. I was looking him into the eyes and he, he was telling me the truth. So we believe mm-hmm. that the pilots do not have any involvement. And, you know, this is how it, it goes on. You know, obviously there's guys that have to put the substances on board the planes. You know, um, I don't know what kind of a cover story these guys have been told. You know, I don't know if these guys are psychopathic by nature. I don't know what kind of mind control needs to take place for these for these guys to um to to carry out their functions but um you know it's it, it's like um it's it, it's um it's 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 definitely um it's definitely not it's th- there's not not that many people involved in, directly in the program I, I believe that it's it's uh, there's very few people that have are in full knowledge about this even people in the environmental protection agency and in, in, in uh, lower levels of government, they've been scripted, as I said, to uh, lie to the public. Perhaps these people have been told that it's to protect us from global warming and they believe maybe that they are doing um, a good a good thing, a good service to humanity or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um, right. Yeah. It's amazing. The, 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 um, just the level of lying that, that has to take place for this to occur. And yeah. I think that a lot of people, the people that know, as you say, may feel that they're doing a good thing because they've been lied to to say that it's to exactly. protect us from global warming. But exactly. here's the deal. Can, okay. can I, so can just, I just, just, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry yeah. Kate, can I just add, people, okay. people wonder how could a program of this um, magnitude be taking place, you know, and um, yeah. with the involvement of, of, of a few people, you know, uh, but so many people or whatever. And, you know, I always talk about the Manhattan Project. There was 130,000 people working on this and very few of those people knew the the evil uh, sinister uh, end result of that you know of these that program which was the uh, you know the the atomic bomb you know and um you know it's it's based on that, that, that was it was it, the whole thing was based on compartmentalization everybody exactly. at their everybody carrying out their particular function were just ne- working on a need to know basis and that's it and this is this is how the whole thing is working where where robotics aren't doing the work it's it's it, it's where it's a human. Um, you know, these people have been scripted, you know, with um, their own little cover stories and whatever. But, uh, you know, right. this is why it's so it's so important to reach out to all of these people that do have. You know, um, power within the establishment, you know, if we could get, say, like all the pilots, if we could get like mm-hmm. 100 or 200 or 300 pilots to uh, have a worldwide general strike, you know, to ground all planes, you know, something like that, you know, some. Something mm-hmm. powerful like that, you know, that's what it's mm-hmm. going to take are all of these e- EPA operatives, you know, to stand down from the, their positions and call this out for what it is, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Terry, wait, I've got to ask this question now. And that is so the Met Office computer, the supercomputer, I imagine that it can track uh, atmospheric conditions throughout the globe, but they don't necessarily have control, let's say, over the over the sky over India or over the sky over Syria, you know, places where we know that chemtrailing is going on. And by the way, Syria, I don't know that that's happening there. But um, so so it does seem that there's got to be a level of global complicity, probably based on what is it? The idea that somehow they're protecting their airspace. They're using it, that it's a military application. Harry or Terry um, what do you think? What's going on? Why are we seeing this in India? Why would the heck would India, Pakistan, um, why, is, why is it happening in Morocco? Why is it happening all over? Why? Uh, What's this agenda for? Well, the Met well, Office computer is also linked to some military computers as well in the US. So it's a major, that's why it's subject to the Secrecy Act. Um, I believe there's not just one agenda. It's not just weather. 
where there is just a bit of fun to them, I believe, yes, they'll, for example, in the Philippines, when they did not want a U.S. naval base there. Um, so it was only a short time before a massive hurricane hit the Philippines. And lo and behold, mm. just off the coast was a fleet of American ships already filled with water bottles and help and says, we'll help you. And guess what? There's no naval base on the Philippines. So it's a bit more complex than that. There's a lot of energy in the atmosphere around the planet and adding um, particulates which help frequency and energy to transmit. Um, then you're looking at another different animal altogether. Um, you can actually see the energy in the atmosphere. Um, I picked up on one of my videos from a satellite virtually from Mexico right through towards the UK and Europe, 4,590 miles straight line of scalar wave energy. And even as Tesla found out, when you get a, a scalar wave energy, electromagnetics, you also get perpendicular lines coming out at uh, 90 degrees. And that's exactly what was on that. Um, and later, at the end of that, uh, we had the worst flooding on record in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so abysmal. Yeah. But think about this. I generate four kilowatts just on the roof of my house. Imagine how much energy there is in the atmosphere. Say, for example, well, I, I want to get thousand to square miles. Yeah, I want to get to your, your, your uh, inventions, and that's going to be a very important segment of the show. But I, I do want to tell you that I flew across the country, the United States, last year, two years ago. And I got to tell you, I saw lightning, not normal lightning. I'm talking there were there was electricity all through the sky over this country. And, it, and there was no it was wasn't that there was rain, but it was just lightning after lightning after lightning after lightning. And I realized, you know, they're doing this. And, and you kind of wonder you know, our nervous systems here on Earth, we're underneath this, this, this cloud crap. And how is it affecting our psyche? How is it affecting our nervous system? How is it affecting our metabolism, our health? They're doing all of these experiments without our consent. Yes. And, you know, we're just guinea pigs. It's really, it's just the, the, the nerve, you know, the gall, the outrage. Yeah. Oh my God. Hey, I, have to, I have to tell you this because me and Terry know this first and um, I'll introduce it and tell you, we'll tell you. Um, when we went to Berlin, which was the critical discussions conference for geoengineering, solar radiation management um, and techniques of geoengineering, um, they had a gentleman there called Jemais Caschio, who was one of the world's top, um, what's the name? What's Transhumanists. The word? Transhumanists. In other words, he gave a talk and he says, our human body, our human form is inadequate. Now, think about that. What he's saying is the way our bodies are now isn't good enough. And he was saying now the body can be transformed. Now, somebody explained to me when we're discussing spraying chemtrails, so solar radiation management and filling the atmosphere with particulates, what has that got to do with transhumanism? And then you discover something like Morgan's disease, which we believe is sprayed and added to chemtrails and a host of other things which change DNA. Um, they now have viruses. Now, what a virus does, it kidnaps your DNA, of course. So what a great vehicle to add it to things like chemtrails that we can breathe in which will change our human form. And that's exactly what James Caschio was talking about. But you interviewed him, didn't you, Terry? Yes. And I didn't actually know who he was. I just grabbed him in the, in the corridor just before one of the presentations. I wasn't sure of who he was. I didn't realize he was a transhumanist. And, um, you know, tr transhumanism is changing the human body from what it is now to something different. And... Um, so I, I, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't realize, I didn't realize he was a transhumanist. So I didn't ask him any questions about transhumanism, but I asked him about, um, his proposals to, uh, spray the atmosphere with, um, with, 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 with sulfates and to take control of the atmosphere and take control of the weather. And, um, I, I, I said, you know, do you think this is a, a good idea, man? You know, you're, 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 you're telling us that you want to play God with our planet. And I was kind of pretty much saying to him, you know, Kind of, how dare you, man? And how dare all of these scientists? 
have their little secretive little meetings because they are secretive. They're kind of advertised, but you know they don't they don't largely advertise them. But you know the public can go along to these things. But how dare you guys talk about engineering our environment and engineering our weather and taking control of the atmosphere? This is just outrageous. And you know, but I I spoke to this guy and he he believes. You know, he said, yeah, we well we gotta we gotta respond to global warming and. You know, this is this is the the best way we see fit, and you know, so you know, I said to David Keith in Cambridge, I said to David Keith, you know, um, David, what would you say to the thirty one thousand American scientists who believe um, that global warming is a hoax? And David Keith went very silent, and then he responded by saying, "Well, I don't know if there's thirty two thousand recognizable scientists uh, that have signed this petition." And I tried to talk, and I wasn't allowed to talk any further, but. 32,000 scientists have signed a petition to say that they believe global warming is a fraud and the earth hasn't been warming for 17 years and 7,000 of those or 9,000 of those scientists have PhDs. So all, all of the plans that these crazy scientists are basing their proposals upon, um, the, the reasons they're basing their proposals upon are, are, are fraudulent. They're saying that they need to spray sulfates to, to create a, an artificial cloud blanket around the Earth to reflect the sun back out to space for solar radiation management but um, to, to, to cool the planet. But the, the Earth hasn't been, hasn't been warming. So, you know, there's obviously so much more um, to this agenda than just controlling the weather. You know, it's, um, it's, it's so much more deep than that. And obviously, you know, to have a transhumanist at a, at a conference like that, you know, it's, it, that says a lot, you know, that there's much more to this than just engineering well, the climate. This is about engineering life itself, you know, with whatever else they want to spray, it whether it be nano, nanotechnology or DNA disrupting technology or, you know, um, down in France, a laboratory recently done tests on air particulates and, um, in, in the results, it showed up that there were endocrine disruptors in the air. These are, these are, um, these are particulates that are disrupting our hormonal systems, you know, so we know that this stuff has been sprayed. We know that they're already talking about engineering, you know, humans that like these transhumanists, um, Jermaine Caskey will talk about. So, yeah, it's so, uh, so Terry, it's, um, you know, I just want to say uh, more gallons. Uh, Clifford Carnicum believes that we everybody's got more gallons. It's in our system. It's in our food. It's in our water. He's done experiments with potatoes with carrots. I saw on his computer, my own blood. There are tiny little organisms that he calls cross domain bacteria that are attempting to penetrate our blood cells. And when they do so, the normal outline, the circular, beautiful line of the blood cell becomes all wavy looking. And that means that the cross domain bacteria has entered. Now, this stuff is all in our bodies already. Okay, they're already doing their transhumanist agenda. And to me, you know, I I was going to speak about before when I interrupted you, I'm sorry, earlier about the perfect balance of nature, you know, about the perfect balance of God's design or intelligent design. And really at root, we have a spiritual crisis. And I hope to do shows on this aspect of it, because, you know, when when people are not in touch with the perfection of nature as it is. And they seek to alter it and they seek to alter it at every level. It's because they're blind, deaf and dumb to the majestic <laughs> existence that's already there. And so, you know, it's just, you know, as a, as a spiritual person, I, I see it from a spiritual perspective. And I don't know. I just obviously this agenda is so huge. It's so huge. And it's attacking us at every level. And yet nobody most, you know, 90 Seven percent of the people on the globe or more have no idea that it's occurring and we have to just continue to plow forward, you know, but you um, comments. You comments. can't set that from the whole picture case because um, I used to teach scripture for 30 years. And when you look at the whole picture, it's like everything that's good in creation is being attacked and changed. Mm-hmm. In other words, it's like saying uh, you were wrong, God, you got it wrong, but we're going to change it and fix it. And it's the biggest insult you could get in the universe. And according to the scripture, humans were the final cherry on the cake of creation because they were self-aware, they were awake, and they had free will. 
And everything the elites are doing is against that. Uh, and what's it's true. We were talking about how do people wake up and nobody ever says, that's right, I know about cantrails and that's it. It never stops there. It, it opens a Pandora's box of all the other agendas. Exactly. It's impossible exactly. to find one without seeing the others. Eventually, they all come to light. Um, so that's why I thought it was great when I made a, a video for the floods up in Northumberland. Um, it's got 64,000 hits at the moment. And I've had a, an, ex, an ex-mayor um, from up Leeds direction send me a mail on Facebook and two people that used to work into the, in the local authorities asking me about the information um, on it. So really interesting. People are waking up. So when the houses are flooded up to the ceiling and someone says, do you know why this has happened? Look at this. You've just been screwed, mate. And that wakes yeah. people. You know what I really appreciate about what you're doing, Harry, is that you're bringing the scientific information, which is irrefutable from, let's say, these books that you're, you're showing. What I'm wondering, though, is how can we get how can we get concrete evidence that, let's say, the satellite views that, that we see that we know are manipulated? How can we prove that, in fact, the manipulation that they're discussing in the books and the manipulation that we're seeing in the satellite view is identical. And I'll tell you, Michael Murphy is attempting to do this now through getting a sample from actual airspace, from clouds. And it's so wonderful. This is one of the things that this show is really hoping to promote is um, cooperation between the various efforts that we can that we can somehow break through together. You know, you doing what you're doing over in England, Terry in Ireland, uh, Michael Murphy with his film and so many other activists. I just wish that we could somehow, um, you know, help each other, coordinate with each other. However, 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 going back to what Terry was saying about global warming, um, there are activists that, that really and truly, really and truly feel that global warming is real. And so we do have, we have a variance on that. I, I don't think that, I mean, I personally, my own view, well, I, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. It would just be a matter of belief. We had Scott on the show last week, and he says he also does not believe it's real. And he did. He said something very interesting. I asked him about the the melting of the Arctic. What's going on with that? And he talked about, you know, how the the natural cycle that the Earth takes, going from heating to cooling, will. He said something like it happens either from the bottom up or from the top down or something like that. But he was speaking about the Arctic melting as a natural occurrence that would be in accordance with a cooling cycle taking place from the yes. bottom up, I think. And don't quote me on that. But yeah, well, anyway, the, I please. The Earth has always gone in, in, in climatic cycles. It goes hot, cold, hot, cold. We had the mini ice age, the medieval warm period, you know, um, the, 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 the you know, um, used to have um, vineyards in Scotland, um, you know, in, We're in the Victorian times. We're going to take a little break times. here now, Terry. Okay. Terry, we're going to be taking a little break, but we'll be back in about two minutes, okay? So stay tuned. Okay. Is a grave mistake. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio. Skies look gummy, look crummy, look fake. I can't escape the dull heartache. Knowing that my weather's been taken from me. Asking myself. How can it be? Bluer than blue, that's how the sky was. Whiter than white, those were the clouds sailing by. So welcome back to the show, everyone. I just want to say how wonderful it is to have Terry and Harry on today. 
And I will say that if there's a silver lining in the dismal clouds above, it's the connection that we're making with each other all over the world, people that are becoming activists and connecting against this program. So welcome back, Terry, and welcome back, Harry, and our audience. Um, I want to begin with Terry again with to explain the global warming and cooling cycles that very naturally occur. So go ahead, Terry. Yeah, well, uh, the climate has always gone hot, cold, hot, cold. We had medieval warm period from the 9th century to the mid-12th century. And this this was a, a great period for humanity. Um, the, the Vikings were able to grow barley in Greenland. You know, um, there was vineyards in Scotland and in Yorkshire, you know. It's good to, to have warm weather, you know, it's just, and there's nothing unusual about it. It's just the natural climatic cycle. And then it goes cold again, and it goes warm, and it goes cold. Um, you know, during the, uh, from the 17th to the 19th century, um, there used to be frost fairs on the Thames in London, you know, because the Thames was completely frozen over with ice. So it's natural mm-hmm. to have climate cycles from one extreme to the other, and this, is, this has always been the way, but... Um, the climate engineers are, 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 have been brainwashing humanity for the last 30 or 40 years with their media campaign, brainwashing us to believe that global warming is a bad thing. You know, let's say we know that the globe isn't warming. It's been cooling since 1998. All the scientific data says it. Uh, but let's say it was warming. What would be so bad about a warming planet? A warming planet would be a beautiful thing. Humanity has always thrived in warm periods, you know, um, Warm is good. You know, warmer summers, um, or c- cold winters kill more than, um, than warmer summers, you know, kill more people than warmer summers. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like 80% of the world's species of plants, animals, birds and insects live down in the warm tropics of, you know, mm-hmm. the Amazon. And, you know, so it's, it's good. That's, that's why they go there. That's why they'd stay and hang out there is because warm is good. We all love warm. That's why we go on holidays. We, we live in a, a cold kind of climate here in the UK and Ireland, so we go to Spain for 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 summer holidays, you know. And this, we we need the sun, we need warm weather. It's natural to want to be in warm weather. So, but the globalists have have, have told us that global warming is bad, and um, carbon dioxide is also evil, you know. Um, and we need to reduce carbon dioxide, even though we are only at 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now, which is very, very low. It's actually dangerously low. It's so low that um, carbon, carbon dioxide generators are used all around the world um, in, in industrial uh, food growing operations, you know, because the atmosphere is already starved of carbon dioxide. And That's amazing. Yeah. So and, say you that know, again. Will you say, say the, quote the number again. You said that the, the carbon dioxide level is how much? It's 400 parts per million. It's only a trace gas carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere and it's it's a very very low level it's at very very low levels right now it's been much much higher it's been 10 times higher uh, in the past uh, throughout history okay. um we're we're at dangerously low levels you know if 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 we go down to 200 parts per million that's the safety buffer gone to protect um for, from species extinction and you go down to 150 parts per million and that's that's the end of plant life plants starts plants start to die uh, at 150 parts per million. So we've got these crazy scientists with their proposals to, you know, sequester carbon dioxide uh, and to store it underground and different schemes to bring it down into the ocean floors with artificial um, fertilization of algae blooms and different things, you know, and it's all based on a lie. They're telling us that there is an abundance and there's too much carbon dioxide and we need to reduce it, but nothing could be further from the truth. We're at dangerously low levels. Wow. And it's all a lie. So they, science- they, tell us, they tell us everything that's bad is good. They tell us warming is bad. They tell us CO2 is bad. They tell us the sun is bad. So they've got to deploy solar radiation management. We've got to manage the sun. The giver of life. Life cannot uh, survive or exist without the sun. Sunlight. We need sun. And we cannot survive without carbon dioxide. So the two very most important building blocks of life are, are under... Um, a, a sabotage under attack here by these psychopaths. They, they're saying that sunlight is bad and carbon dioxide is bad. And this is, it's just so crazy. It's, people it's people crazy. need to wake up to these, these psychopaths. So, you know, it seems like our science has been totally manipulated in the service of the political agendas. And when you say that 
you know, that global warming is, is perfectly innocent and wonderful. And by the way, I, I completely agree with you. People point to the enormity of the fake climate change, which is being manipulated. And how we prove it's fake and manipulated, that's what we've got to do. You know, and I think, Harry, you are you are working on that. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, I posted that. I did a, an exercise on it and tell you correct. Uh, 150 parts per million is extinction of the planet. And when the dinosaurs walked on the Earth, life was prolific. It was healthy. I mean, animals were growing to be 30 and 40 tons in weight. You can't be unhealthy in a bad <laughs> atmosphere and grow to that size. I mean, I suppose joking, when they, when they did a dump, it was a mini roundabout, you know. <laughs> they were excellently healthy. Um, and that was when it was 7,000 parts per million. Now we're only at 400, wow. 400 parts per million. Think about it. Incredible. <laughs> I mean, I love facts. And when you look at it like that, it makes an ass out of these scientists that come up with these ideas. And you know when it started, Kate? It started many, many years ago by the Club of Rome, who stated that they needed a common enemy to all the whole planet, that the, all the nations could come together and fight. And they said that global warming would fit in exactly the right place where they wanted to get the whole planet together. And lo and behold, we've just had the Paris Conference, COP21. And what are they saying? The whole planet's got to come together and fight global warming and climate change. I mean, I'm an inventor, and I couldn't have invented that any better than they did. What, a, what an amazing, fraudulent, disgusting plan to take. Well, it's going to cost every family a thousand pound a year in tax, and that will be going straight to the Rothschilds bank. So, and as Harry, just, Harry says, yeah. that. that that quote in itself is a confirmation that this is a long-term strategic agenda to engineer a crisis so that they can bring about the solutions, um, which would be um, climate engineering and different things that they want to do now. But that, that, that quote was made by the Club of Rome, and the Club of Rome were one of the sponsors at the uh, Climate Engineering Conference in Berlin in 2014. And so these people come out with a quote like that back in 1990s and then they um, they sponsor a climate engineering project uh, program then as well or uh, proposals so there's a there's a, you know it's 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 a little bit of a conflict of interest there yeah there's sometimes you get people listening to radio stations like this and they don't believe a word of what we're saying and that's fair enough because they don't know what we know but i will speak to you now personally for example, we had Mrs. Thatcher in this company, in the country as Prime Minister, and there were activists back then in her day whose parents were activists because their children at the hands of government ministers suffered paedophilia. And there was even mention of child sacrifice. And Mrs. Thatcher stood up in Parliament and said, that's disgusting to suggest that because it's not true and it ought to be stopped. Anyway, lo and behold, here we are years later, an independent journalist going through the archives, they forgot to remove two files. And in there, it's, it proved that Mrs. Thatcher covered up um, the exposing of Jimmy Savile, Lord Britton, um, uh, Cyril Smith. They were all MPs, all proven to be involved with paedophilia. How about that? Mm. That's your conspiracy theorists. So, you know, most conspiracy theories end up being proven to be true. And these people that said it wasn't true have now caused that much pain and suffering to people who did suffer at the hands of these people and never got justice. So maybe it's about time these people started to listen. So you know what? Scott Stevens last week said, he said the truth will come out. It has to come out. Truth rises to the surface like cream, inevitably. My question is, what can we do other than continue to do what we've already been doing, which is raising public awareness? What can we do to prove to the people that need to know that this is, in fact, happening? We know it's happening. We know what their dirty little tricks are. We understand the game pretty much. Where do we go from here? What do and, and well, I have other questions, but I, I just wanted to kind of 
speak to this for a moment. What, what in your brilliant minds are the next steps other than doing what we're already doing? Well, a- apart from the satellite image evidence, which Harry has so brilliantly documented in his recent videos of climate engineering um, and climate engineering hardware, um, like HARP causing um, weather extremes, Apart from showing these kind of um, images, we can 100% prove that the Earth's climate has been engineered for 50 years at least. Uh, If we refer to a document which I recently came across, um, which is entitled A Half a Century of Planetary Experimentation. Now, in in this document, it's, 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 um, it's about 100 pages long. There is literally thousands of, of weather mod- modification projects which, which go back, some of which go back to the 1960s. And some, some of these programs are, you know, for r- rainfall enhancement, snow, f- snowpack aug- augmentation, uh, solar radiation management, uh, you know, artificial cloud creation. These, these are all admitted programs. So for people out there that are in denial that these programs are going on, there's no denying this anymore because we have the evidence, we have the admissions, we have the documents, the white papers. And, you know, ignorance is no longer any um, excuse. It's no longer a get out of jail free card, you know. Um, so um, some, some of the programs in this, um, in this document um, are as big as 700,000 square kilometers. You know, uh, one, one, of, one of them is 700,000 square kilometers. That was in China and it was for rainfall enhancement. Now, these programs um, are not included in the um, – International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's five yearly reports on the climate. Um, um, human activity is blamed on global warming or climate change and human right, carbon right. output, but these programs right. are not taking into account, are not taken into account into these, into these models, which is, which makes these models 100% flawed from the get go, you know, so, right. um, this is, this is how we can 100% prove that these programs are going on that our, our climate has been engineered for at least 150 years or for at least 50 years. We can present documents like this to people who are skeptical. We can also refer to the World Meteorological Organization um, in 2012. They released a report which lists 42 countries engaged in full-time weather modification activities. 42 countries. So, you know, so, so there's is no there denying any way, this. Terry, of getting... Can we get these documents, though, into the faces of your MPs, into the government officials' hands? You, you mentioned I, one half century of climate experimentation. Is that a document? I'm wondering, is it a website? Can you refer that to our listeners, please? Yes, um, I have it here. Hang on a minute. You just ha- just uh, Google half half a century of okay. planetary experimentation, and you will find it. Um, it's, it's a report. Is by it the planetary World. or climactic? Uh, planetary. Planetary or climactic? Planetary experimentation. Planetary. So, so uh, what do you? I mean, so, when they say Kate, it's not happening. I mentioned Kate. There was um, a lady please. called Olga Raffa, and yeah. she put. She spent hours and hours putting a directive together, and every MP in the UK government received a copy. And um, it was also handed in personally at Number Ten Downing Street. And it listed all the evidence of geoengineering, the methods of chemtrails, the results, the problems it's causing, the weather manipulation, the equipment they were using. Um, so a lot of MPs, well, say every MP at that time when it was sent out, did receive a copy of that. Um, and it was a directive to ban and to mm-hmm. stop geoengineering. Um, so and she's done marvelous, marvelous work. But, yes. but has there been any response? Are they just flushing that thing down the toilet? Um, I think she has had some feedback and a couple of MPs were very sympathetic to it and they have been communicating about it. I think Olga knows more about that, of course. I've personally Good. spoke to Peter Lilly, who was on the panel in the um, committee rooms at the government when they were doing the um, uh, climate. Um, it was broadcast on the BBC and I explained to him one of the reactions with aluminium. Um, can I go into this now? Is that okay? Please. Yeah. Um, yes. What I found of, and this comes back to David Keith at Cambridge, and thank you, Terry. Terry recorded it for me. Um, this is very, very important, right? Aluminium 
um, causes big problems in the body. It helps to drop your immune system um, with regards to heavy metals. Now, aluminium nanoparticles have an incredible reaction with mercury. The two of them create um, toxins as well that mercury is certainly... Um, what, what do they call it now when it affects your nervous system? Um, what do they say when your brain's... Uh, um, neu a neurotoxin? It's neurotoxic. Neurotoxin. Yeah, but it's neurotoxic. Now, what happens is we've got aluminium in vaccines. We've got aluminium being sprayed. We've got aluminium in tap water because the key aliment of fluoride is, guess what? Aluminium. Aluminium. Now, mercury is in vaccines and the fillings, mm. amalgam fillings, which was a big con when they started doing that, putting mercury into your mouth, what a clever way to get it in your body. And half the weight of the filling of your mercury, of the, the filling is mercury. And 37% mm. of it sweats out within the first three to five years. Now, mm. add that to aluminium. Now, you know why Alzheimer's disease is the number one killer in the United Kingdom. And it's the mm. number three killer for men. And it's been prolific since these programs have been taking place. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. and we, I mentioned this to David Keith, and this is true, isn't it, Terry? Mm -hmm. He stood down, looked at his feet, he legged it off stage mm -hmm. in front of some real world-class scientists mm -hmm. and stayed off stage until Matthew Watson, who was comparing that particular day, um, said, listen, you've got to come back on and answer this question. <laughs> he can't, mm. can't answer it. And he did come back on and he stood there for at least 20 seconds in silence. We were all laughing at him. Mm. <laughs> um, he never really did answer the question. Basically, the answer is no, they haven't investigated it and they're unaware of what would happen. <laughs> so, yeah. it's great. I just this can't wait till we... we Truth and we, mean, we need a world tribunal. You know, we need we need to hold these people accountable for what they're doing. These are murderers, yeah. and it's it's absolutely despicable. And I just so applaud both of your work. I just want to say I'm I'm just so happy and awed by what you're both doing. Um, and, and we if, need we need to multiply you. <laughs> if, Go if, ahead, if Terry. Anybody, if anybody out there is unfamiliar with David Keith, David Keith is like the poster child of um, climate engineering. He's the the main sales salesman of of these programs, David Keith does conferences all around the world. He's been he's been on the Colbert Show in America, um, where he laid out his plans to spray hundreds of millions of tons of sulfuric acid and aluminium oxide into the Earth's atmosphere every year to facilitate climate engineering programs. Now, when he was questioned on the toxicological effects of aluminium um, on, on, on life on Earth. Um, he was questioned by Dane Wigington. This is in uh, What in the World Are They Spraying? Um, he was questioned on the, the, uh, the health effects. And Dane said to David Keith, he said, have you done any studies into the health effects uh, that these substances will have on life and humans and plant life and different, different life forms? And David Keith says, well... We haven't really, but, you know, we're just free riding. We're, we're just, it's not really a moral hazard. It's more like we're free riding on our grandkids. Mm -hmm. So these, these are the kind of psychopaths that we're dealing with here. This guy is openly stating that he wants to spray a deadly neurotoxin like aluminium oxide, which is the main cause of Alzheimer's, dementia, and autism. This guy wants to spray hundreds of millions of tons of this stuff into the atmosphere every year. Um, and guess so what? It's already need, happening, people, right? People, it's already happening, but people need to understand. If they don't believe that it's already going on, they need to understand that this psychopath is proposing it. But we can confirm that it's already been sprayed into the atmosphere through, obviously, video evidence. We can see airplanes turning on and off trails. I have got endless amount of video um, uh, videos of, of planes turning on and off trails. We know that the, the planes are retrofitted with the spray pipes. We, 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 we hear the proposals to spray aluminium into the atmosphere from the likes of David Key, and we see it showing up in the environment all around the world now in rainwater tests, hair tests, blood tests. It's everywhere. It's all around the environment. And people can argue, yeah, okay, it's aluminium oxide, or it's aluminium. Aluminium is the most abundant element. 
Yes, it is, but it's not abundant in free form. This stuff should not be right. um, in, in the oceans. It shouldn't be falling down out of the sky. And we know it's falling down out of the sky. I know personally because I've had rainwater tested that I had collected in my own backyard. And aluminium showed up in the, in the results. I've got 39 parts per million. And there shouldn't be aluminium in the rainwater here because I live in a pristine rural area. And um, back in t- 20, t- 2010, there was... Um, um, a study done on a thousand whales all around the oceans of the world. And, um, th- these, these whales were in the most, the studies were taken in the most from these whales in the, the sam- samples were taken from these whales, blood samples were taken from them in the most remote regions of the planet. And, um, the scientists said that the, 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 the aluminium that they found in their blood, the levels were just draw- jaw dropping. So what the hell is aluminium doing in, in whales' blood, you know? And these, these creatures are in the most remote regions. This, this stuff is just everywhere. Um, and, you know, and then we see Harry. the correlation. We Harry. see the correlation with the spraying then. As the spraying is ramped up, we see the neurological disorders like Alzheimer's and autism just mm-hmm. becoming more and more prevalent. Everybody, every second person. Not to mention cancer. Has, yep. Has a cancer yep. as well and respiratory problems. We've got people dying from respiratory failure now, people that never smoked a day in their whole lives. Um, respiratory failure and, and uh, l- um, lung disease is the third leading cause of death in America now. And it used to be the, the fifth leading cause of death. And now it's, it's, it's gone from fifth leading cause of death 10 years ago to the third leading, leading cause of death now. And, you know, there's something, something in the air, you know, and w- we know what it is. And it doesn't take much to join the dots. All we got to do is a little bit of research and we can we can start working this out all each all of us individually we can we can work it out we we can understand what's going on and then once we understand you know we have a moral obligation as caretakers of this planet to take immediate action because I, I say to people you know if you know this is going on and you fail in your duty to to, uh, to uh, take take action you are an accessory to the crime you know because it's as simple as that. We've got to be this blunt about it. You know, if you know that this is going on, if you saw your, your neighbor burying a dead body in, in his, his, his back garden, you would have a, a moral obligation to report that crime. Uh, otherwise, you're an accessory to the murder. You're, you're withholding information. And, you know, people need to understand this. Um, you know, it's not like we have some kind of a choice to make here. Oh, will I, will, will I or will I not? Mm, let me see. Will I want to save the planet or will I not? It's like we are the only species here, you know, that humans are the only species that can stop this. Innocent life everywhere has no hope of stopping this. So it's down to us. Um, everybody, anybody who knows this is going on needs to just get motivated, get activated and understand what time it is because time is running out. So do you know that you just gave the most incredible speech and that that speech needs to be written down and it needs to be broadcast everywhere? And I just thank you so much for your words. May I ask you? Is this happening through the jet fuel, do you think? I wonder if you could speak more about the retrofitting, or is it an additional separate enterprise? Is it happening through the fuel or separately, please? It's possibly in the fuel as well, but I I can verify that it is being sprayed from spray pipes, which are, are fitted to the pylons of all commercial airliners. I have videoed and photographed these spray pipes when I have boarded um, commercial airliners like Aer Lingus and Ryanair. I have these videos up online. One of my, the Ryanair spray pipe video has had 50,000 views on Facebook, 40,000 views on Facebook and 10,000 views on YouTube. Um, these, these pipes are, are, they are explained away by the, the manufacturers of these engines as, um, drain pylons, dra- dra- sorry, drain tubes, uh, to drain off, um, hydraulic oil and fuels that may collect in the fairing. Um, around the area of the the, uh, the exhaust, so they tell us they're telling us basically that they are dumping oils and and fuels on us, um, but we know that these are far more than just drain pipes because I have got um, video evidence of of Aer Lingus and Ryanair and other ma- a- a- major airline carrier jets spraying turning on and off um, trails at specific locations in mm-hmm. the sky. You can see them coming into Irish airspace. The plane will be flying along. There is no trail whatsoever coming from the plane. And all of a sudden, activation. Yep. 
Okay, mm-hmm. and so this this is this is ever this is irrefutable evidence, you know. Um, and then you know, of course, the EPA and all of the debunkers will say, oh well, that's just a change in atmospheric um, physics or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is go on to the, the University of Wyoming uh, atmospheric soundings. That's the website. You can go on there every day, and you can you can check out the atmospheric humidity, the relative atmospheric hu- humidity at altitude in the skies above you, wherever you live in the world. You can check it out on this website. And most days over Ireland, the relative humidity is less than 20%. Now, for contrail formation, this is in the Met offices, the UK Met offices' own data, and also Wikipedia have this information up on, on their um, web, on, on, on Wikipedia as well. They say that for contrail formation, um, this, this, the conditions must be very specific. Firstly, uh, the altitude of the aircraft must be above 26,000 feet. The temperature must be below minus 50, and the relative humidity must be above 60 percent. That varies. Some science academies say it's 70 percent, but it's 60 to 70 percent. I have video these planes spraying trails on days when the relative humidity has been as low as one to two percent. So what I have witnessed on those days. Um, is not water vapor. And I can also mm-hmm. verify from other videos that I have filmed, um, I have videoed specific types of trails being deployed from these planes. Um, some are short, some are long, some are wide, expanding ones. you got other ones then that will have like little cotton wool balls coming down from them. But you got other ones, you got other trails which separate out as the plane moves on in the sky. I'm not talking about the two trails from each engine. I'm talking about there's two separate layers to the trail. There's a bottom layer and a top layer. And whatever the substance is being sprayed on the bottom, uh, in the bottom layer, it's heavier because it falls quicker. And the other one stays suspended longer. And you can see the two separations, the substance separation, the two trails separate. And that, again, that's more, that's more video evidence and it's in- incontrovertible, irrefutable evidence. So... Don't let anybody tell you that what we're seeing is water vapor. It's not water vapor. It's, it's, it's a biological and a chemical attack on you and your family, and you should take this very personally, and you should be mad as hell about this. Mm-hmm. So um, these various commercial airlines that are retrofitting their nozzles, how, how, is the, how do you – what's your hypothesis about why commercial – Jetliners are getting involved with this, and how that's well, being coordinated. It's 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 also it's a very lucrative business, obviously, um, because you can you can book a flight with Ryanair anywhere around Europe. You can get a flight with Ryanair from Ireland for as low as twenty euro a return flight anywhere in Europe for twenty euro. Now, how the hell can an airline company make money? Um, you know, mm-hmm. out of prices that low. How can they make money out of prices that low if, if, if they are only carrying passengers and that's the only business they're involved in? The answer is it's an impossibility. You could not even pay the bills for, with 20, for 20 euro seats for 20 euro. So, um, you know, they, they, are, they, are, they are getting paid, obviously, a lot of money to um, deploy these, these programs mm-hmm. to spray these substances. Um, you know, it doesn't take much to figure it out, you know, when you think about it, you know, when you look at all these very cheap flights, I, I always wondered before I woke up to chemtrailing and climate engineering six years ago or five years ago, I wondered how the hell can Ryanair, you know, fill all these seats for so cheap. And, you know, when I found out about geoengineering, I said, whoa, there's the answer. It all <laughs> fell, fell in place. That made sense. Yep. Yep. So, um, the question is, uh, until we can fully, uh, expose this in the courts of law, what can we do to protect ourselves? And I'd like to turn now to Harry, who, uh, if you could talk a little bit about Oregon and, and how you think it could help people. Yeah, or, Oregon's a very real energy. Um, Wilhelm Reich um, discussed this a lot. He had a, a, an actual class in his home where people would come from all over the world and he would teach them about Orgon. Um, it's, how would you explain it? It's, it's an energy force within life. Um, and it's right through the universe. Um, it does affect, um, things like weather as well. Um, I wouldn't say it's a frequency 
it's not based on electromagnetics, it's an entity all of its own. And he, he had a, a product called, a, um, well, an invention he did called the, uh, the Cloud Buster, um, and that worked very well. He, he went to farmers that were going bankrupt because it hadn't rained for four years, and every time he turned up, without fail, within 12 hours, the farms received rainwater. Um, mm. The CIA were watching him do this. Um, he, he made what was an unusual thing called the, um, the organ cabinet. And people who couldn't get cured of cancer came to Willem Reich. And the CIA were aware of this as well. And the pharmaceutical companies were getting very worried because the terminally ill people with cancer that, you know, the... Um, they couldn't cure at the hospitals, so uh, he did. He cured them. And basically, the body works in frequencies. The cells work in frequencies. Radiation is a frequency, and when that upsets the cell's frequency, the cell grows deformed, distorted, and then you get cancer. So he reset the body's frequency using organ, and he cured cancer. Amazing. Um, that is amazing. Yeah. Um, frequency is everything, as Tesla said. It really, really so is. But, but and let me ask that's you something, not Harry. Soon. Well, why? You know, I've seen Oregon. You know, I've seen it. It looks just like you know little metal shavings, and there might be a little some crystals. And but how does that actually? I mean, I've kind of I, I love the stuff. It looks well, pretty. That, I've got some all around my house. But but what does it actually do? That is not Oregon. That affects Oregon. So. <clears throat> and you can't generate organ, you can only manipulate it and collect it. Um, and that's oh. what they, they try to do. Um, people think they're quite powerful. In fact, they aren't all that powerful um, in tests that have done, but they certainly do make an effect. If you put one near water in a fridge or a freezer, when you freeze it, you can see the organ effect on it. So, yes, they, they do work. Um, but when you generate organ like with these cloud buster um there's some top secrets in using one of those and i know what they are by the way um they are partly earthed into the earth because the earth generates organ and has organ in very very large quantities and it affects the difference between organ on the in the earth and what's happening to the ether in the atmosphere and it can have a massive effect on the atmosphere for a, so, for Harry, Harry, can you can you break this down a bit more? Like, what what are uh, I'm sitting there going, oh, I don't really understand what you're saying. So, you're saying that Oregon is some energy generated by the Earth. It's in abundance. You also mentioned the word etheric, I believe. What? So, could you could you for people that really don't know about this, such as myself, um, if you could just explain it just a bit more um, simply, and then. Uh, are there, you know, I've heard about cloud busters. I don't know if you're feeling comfortable to speak a little bit about that, but we'd love to hear about it. Yeah, um, some of the, there's videos on cloud busters and a guy made one in the States and it hadn't rained there for four months and all the, the weather stations said, no, we've got sunshine for the next fortnight. And um, if you type in on YouTube, Wilhelm Reich, cloud buster, mm -hmm. and you'll see the videos on it there. They are amazing. Okay powerful they are very powerful and if they are in the wrong mm. hands they can cause problems too because you have what you call dor which is deadly organ um and i'll tell you where you will see the effect of electromagnetics creating negative energy this is absolutely true since they've been using more electromagnetic frequencies and ionizing the atmosphere we have now lower dark clouds which are only sometimes a few hundred feet up we've never had that sort of thing regular all year round and whenever they can trail you will see dark lower clouds form because they are, are treating the atmosphere with the high energy equipment that they've got and that's how they're forming the clouds um, the chemtrails are actually a conductor for their energies that they put through the atmosphere and that's why they use heavy metals. It's a fantastic conductor in the atmosphere. 
Um, they're also spraying acid. <laughs> and you've got... So wait a minute, you just said... You just said, repeat what you said, if you will. You said the chemtrails are, repeat what you said. They're a conductor <laughs> for the energies they're, that they transmit. And the energies that they're transmitting would be? Electric magnetic energies, yeah. Um, on one of the um, weather stations, they, they called it chaff, which right. is spray metals, yeah? But it enhances the energy fields within the atmosphere. Um, that gives them a, and so a, they, mm, gives them more They could be doing lots of things, you know, not just, as you said, not just modifying weather, but it can be yeah. doing so many things. The dark clouds, which I've noticed over the past five years, you know, which are so obviously not natural. I always thought that it was the metal kind of condensing to the bottom of a cloud because, you know, usually when we would see gray clouds long ago, they would be thunder, they would be rain clouds, you know, and they, they were kind of softer gray. But now we're getting these very, very dark charcoal like gray clouds that sometimes just exist on their own. And you're saying that that's formed by, by what? The, the electromagnetic frequencies that they put in the atmosphere. And Doppler, you could, Doppler radar creates it. Um, I've we, shared pictures with Terry with his untied showing you that. Yeah, we, we, we can see. We can see evidence of these um, these uh, installations at work every day um, on NASA Alpha View. All you got to do is just go on there and look at the cloud cover being manipulated. You can see frequency patterns vibrating through the chemical plasma, or some would some people would call it cloud cover, but I don't even call it cloud cover anymore because it's not natural. Most of the stuff we're seeing up there is chemical plasma. And as Harry said, the, the aluminium is a great conductor, and this is how they're able to basically turn the whole atmosphere into like a plasma. It's, it's the whole thing makes it perfect for their harp applications, for their um, EMF um, transmissions, like from the Doppler radar. It's also great for over the horizon radar, different things. But we can see it every day um, on Alpha View, NASA Alpha View, that is. But we can also just go out our, um, our front, our, our front door and just look up in the sky. And most days we can see the telltale signs of these, these facilities at work. We can see vibrations in the, in the atmosphere, which are completely unnatural. And th these, these frequency clouds that are caused by these technologies, um, are being explained away now in this new NASA cloud chart that I spoke about, you know. So, um, th these, these clouds didn't exist in the distant past. These frequency clouds, you know, it's all, they're all new normals, you know, but they're trying to normalize them now with their new cloud chart. But, um, you know, we can, we can see this every day. We can all see it. We can all learn to read the sky. And, um, you know, Harry does a great job of that. He puts together videos explaining, you know, um, how they use the trails for the con conductor for these applications, you know, and also the trails are being used to seed the clouds to create rain and whatever. But Harry ties in the electromagnetic applications and, how the whole system has been manipulated by these technologies. He does a really good job of that. There's a, there's a lot. Thanks for that, Terry. You're marvellous too. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're both great. Back to, coming back to some facts, right? NASA recently Please. announced fact. Um, we now have, um, on a daily basis, from day to day, cloud cover over the sea is 90%. I had to read yeah. that twice. That's on NASA's website. 90% around the planet over the sea. Um, you can go on NASA's website and read it. I'll send you the link. Now, uh, we've, we've never had that ever in the history of us looking at. We've done, we don't have 90% cloud cover. Now, when you look on the satellites from America to the Atlantic, it's almost white out permanently. And Jim Haywood, who explained geoengineering, standing in the Met office in exactly the spot me and you stood, Terry, on the corridor, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He's upstairs on the balcony. He was filmed there explaining solar radiation management. There will be two layers. That's his own words. There'll be an upper layer and a lower layer. Now, before, we used to have normal clouds where they'd go up puffy, the sun would come out and they'd drift off and we had lovely blue patches in between. Now we have two layers of cloud. A chemtrail goes over. We have really high stratospheric clouds forming with all the frequencies in it. And we have low dark clouds that you can feel like you can reach up and touch. 
In fact, last week when I was driving, there was a transmitter tower only about 300 feet high, and I could not see the top of it. And it's been like that every time I drove past it. The cloud is that low. Um, now, if I can, can, I'll bring CERN into this, because Please. CERN did an experiment called cloud. And they proved that with using frequencies, they can actually build molecules that can form aerosols inside a sterile chamber. Wait a minute, say that again. They, they, they can produce molecules that can be used as aerosols inside a sterile chamber. Now, so you're think, saying that they can make, they can make aerosols without actual planes? Yes, absolutely. It's called quantum. <laughs> it's oh quantum, quantum mechanics. Now, Kate, they've shoved hundreds and hundreds of tons of materials into the Hadron Collider. And they heat it up to thousands and thousands of degrees. I think it's millions of degrees. And it turns into plasma, and that's how they break it down. And it all disappears. Where does it go to? They don't clean it out. And there's loads, there's mil trillions of volts of energy and thousands and thousands of kilowatts that go into CERN. It's the world's largest, most powerful machine ever built, ever built. So can, I, can I just can, can I just add um, the day before that um, CERN went online, the scientists joked amongst each other and they said that when we turn on CERN, um, it, there's a possibility that we could disappear the planet into a black hole. But we're going to give it a go anyhow and see what happens. And we're okay so far. <laughs> yeah. So this is the kind of mentality we're talking about here. Um, can I just so life go is back a to, joke? Please, Terry, go ahead. Can I just go back to just sorry to sorry to kind of go back a little bit, but I just want to go back to no. Jim Haywood. Um, we can get back to CERN in a minute, Harry, if you want. But Jim Haywood, Harry mentioned Jim Haywood is the aerosol research manager in the Met office. He's like very very high up in the chain of command. And um, this guy, he's one of he's one of, one of the big proponents of geoengineering. He's up on the, the Met Office's own website talking about stratospheric aerosol injection and the solar radiation management and carbon dioxide removal. And he's talking about the possibility to deploy these programs in the future. Uh, now, myself and Harry, when we were at Cambridge, uh, the Cambridge Solar Radiation Management Conference last March, we, we were there for four days. Jim Haywood was there. and Myself and Harry were outside having a coffee break. And Jim Haywood was there talking to his science, science, scientist friends. And um, myself and Harry went over. We started chatting to Jim. Nice guy. We, uh, we were gleaning a bit of information from him. Um, but I, I asked him, um, would he be willing to do an interview on camera? And he said, no, 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 no way. I wanted to get the camera out there and just interview our conversation. But he said, no way. He said that you will only try to catch me out. That's what he said. I repeat that. He said to me, when I asked him, can we film our conversation? He said, no, you will only try to catch me out. Now, why would he say that? Why would he say that you will only try to catch me out? How could I catch him out? How could I possibly catch him out unless he was lying? Mm -hmm. So that was confirmation that he's a liar and he knows he's aware of this sinister agenda and he's just in it for his job and his big paycheck and whatever. You know, it just let me just say something, guys. First of all, all the information that you're bringing is, is brilliant and helpful. But something just doesn't add up. Like, you know, if these guys know that that what they're doing is really a ruse, if they know that the science is bad and faulty, they're, now they're proclaiming that they're going to be possibly considering geoengineering what what do you anticipate um what do you anticipate their real their real part in this i mean if the world is going to be destroyed what does it matter if they're going to be wealthy what does it matter if their careers are going to be furthered if their grandchildren won't have a chance to even live why why are they bolstering what is scientifically not provable what scientifically is a lie I, I don't know what they've been promised as a reward for their complicity. 
Um, maybe they've been promised, I don't know, life extension technology. Maybe they've been promised, um, you know, a room on the space station or maybe the possibility to be a part of a colonization on other planets. Who knows what kind of dreams they've been kind of, um, you know, told that they will be presented with or whatever. But um, I don't know. But can I just say that Max Bliss, when Max Bliss was down at the Santi, uh, what was it, the... Um, he was in San Diego at the American Association Advances for Sciences conference last year. And when Max was mm-hmm. there, he got speaking to a scientist. And this scientist had been for the, for the, for the, for the past year, he had been working on designer proteins that can go into the human brain and mop up aluminium. So we know that they're working mm-hmm. on these technologies. We know that we can't, us as the common slave, we can't go into the pharmacy and say, hey, I want some aluminium mopping materials, you know, to clean my brain of aluminium. <laughs> so we know that this stuff is being developed. We know it's, look at, we're living in Book Rogers, man. They've developed this stuff bloody decades ago, I'm sure. They, but my point is that these guys that are involved in these programs, Perhaps they have got all of this technology. Perhaps they are taking these proteins and maybe their, their brains are clean of all of this stuff. Who knows? I don't know. But, um, you know, they're just, these guys are the ultimate boys with toys, you know? They're just like on the ultimate power trip. I'm talking about the low level and the high level elites. They're just on the ultimate power trip. And, you know, who doesn't want a good power trip, man? You know, think about it. You know, think of the mentality of business itself. You know, most bosses out there are complete assholes, man. Nobody wants to work for these people. But these people, these these bosses are just, you know, power hungry trip, uh, power trippers, you know, and they they, they have no respect for people. And, you know, and it's no different when you talk about these programs, you know, all of these guys high up, you know, they just couldn't give a crap about people, you know, most of them. Mm -hmm. I think the final is going to be total control because when you, the more gallons tends to some of the particulates they've found they have like little metallic hexagons at the end of the fibers that split off right and right. they've proven that these are transmitters now a digital transmitter needs only very very small amount of energy to do a transmission but if they've enhanced the atmosphere google's now coming into this i put a post up they deploying thousands of mini satellites which can pick up signals and transmit signals and also transmit energy as well. Um, mm-hmm. So they are terraforming the whole planet to be able to collect mm-hmm. signals and deploy signals for human tracking of the body. You don't need a mobile mm-hmm. phone. You don't need a, a wow. transmitter. Your body will be followed, traced and tracked. No problem whatsoever. Um, this is true. And I want to just say one thing, if I could, because we're coming to the end close and I want to get your websites there. I also want to to say there are products out there that can help cleanse your body. And Scott Stevens spoke about one of these and he's got something called Blue Water Alchemy, yes. which I guess you take a teaspoon a day. Uh, I recommend people check out Blue Water Alchemy. And there's also Zeolite. Uh, you have to be careful of what kind you take, but there are things you can do to, to keep detoxing your body. And it's really important that we do. And I, I feel like I need to do more of it. Before we go any further though, I want to get your websites out there. So, um, if you don't mind me interrupting, uh, first of all, Terry, can you give your YouTube channel, please? Yeah. My YouTube channel is T-Bird Lauderdale, as in Fort Lauderdale. And, um, I've got another YouTube channel called Fluoride Free Wexford. Um, I'm also on Facebook, uh, Terry Lawton on Facebook. I don't have a website. Great. So there are my contact uh, details. Okay. And Harry, uh, your, a, your websites. I've got a YouTube channel called Cantrail. Cantrail, no gap. Um, it's just Harry Rhodes on Facebook. Um, I've got a, a private website, which is to do with all gone and energy savers. I'm not saying that for business. It's an education website as well. Um, and that is Lex, Ali double X, energy solutions dot com. Okay. And your YouTube channel was, can you repeat it, please? Chemtrail, Chemtrail. Chemtrail, Chemtrail. Okay. Uh, now going, now that we've covered that, um, what were we saying? 
you're the website. If people, yep. and it's nice to finish on a positive note, which we, we always do. Yes. Um, climatechanged.co.uk will show you how to make an organ generator, which will help to clear clone formations. Um, you can make them for about $120 um, using a steel could you, gun. Could you give that website again, please? Climatechanged.co.uk Climatechanged.co.uk And information, everything you need to make one. And if everybody that listening now made one of these, make a massive difference to the atmosphere. They are Seriously. All can you tell us how powerful these can be, please. I did a video on, I was one mile downwind of my organ generator. I'd got black clouds to the left, black clouds to the right, and a massive blue line right down back to my house. Mm. Yeah. And can I also say that I've, 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 I've heard hundreds of reports of people are, um, planting these like chem busters and organ devices in their garden. And like within an hour, they get a visit by, uh, from a black helicopter. So that's confirmation that. There's something mm -hmm. happening. There's something working. And, you know, they shut down Wilhelm Reich. They stole his patents and I believe they murdered him. And, you know, so he obviously was, uh, he was obviously, um, doing some very positive stuff with Oregon, you know, so it, it, this, this stuff is got to be effective, man. You know, it's, 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 uh, it ain't no guys, this guy's in Portugal that pasted on uh, Facebook yesterday, posted, <laughs> posted on Facebook. All their organ generators were confiscated by the government. Mm -hmm. Really? So, some, there must you know, be the, some... problem, the problem is the oceans, and this is a whole other, we could do a whole other hour on this, but when you mentioned about the cloud cover going over the oceans, and we've got fish, of course, washing up all over, dolphins and whales and you name it, um, you'd, you'd like to, you, know, you wonder what's happening down there and how that's affecting everything. Yeah. What they're doing, Kate, they're heating up the surface of the oceans. You can see it from Mexico. One small spot, about a mile across, you can see the cloud go from a dot and it expands and expands as much as five, six hundred miles across. So they're heating the atmosphere using the equipment and then they're creating cloud formations, putting chemtrails into it and the rest is weather modification. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have they have weaponized the atmosphere. They have turned our beautiful planet into a giant microwave oven. And unless you got a way out of here, man, there's no way to avoid this, you know. But there's, there's good things happening as well. We've got some projects on the go, which are top secret. Um, we're looking at equipment that can change the weather drastically. And these are mm. in progress. They will be protected by patents for public use. And there will be plans going out which will show them how they can be made. That's about all I can say for that. Now, Harry, for people that want to follow that when the time comes that you are able to release that information, what should they look toward to find out more? Um, your, uh, your website, your, your YouTube? Yeah, we'll be doing it on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Okay. Listen, guys, I just want to thank you so much and a great bow for all the amazing work you're doing. And much love to you in Ireland and you in the Thank you so much for being part of the show today. God bless you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. See the truth and not hide the future depends on what we do. Speak the truth, blue urban.